Hello, my name is Ellie, and we are Hope Troop, a group of teens dedicated to helping you understand child abuse. We want you to understand that some secrets are good to tell. If you or somebody you know is being abused, do the right thing. Tell. Before we begin, there are three things you need to know. First, child abuse is on the uprise. Since quarantine has got families on lockdown, there has been a sharp increase in child abuse cases. Even if you don't need to hear this, somebody in your world does. Secondly, these monologues were written by teens in this troop. They're based on real life events, so the content may be harsh, but then again, abuse is harsh. And finally, if you need assistance, there will be resources linked with this video. It is my pleasure to present Hope Troop. I never imagined it would get this bad. The, the pain, it's more consistent, more never ending now. The fear from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. It distracts me from focusing on anything but her, my mom. Why does she abuse me? And why does my father just let it happen? He's trapped just like me, I guess, but why doesn't he stop it? Why don't we just leave? But my dad just tells me to hush and quit complaining. My mom doesn't say anything. She just lets her fist do the talking. I don't understand why she doesn't just yell at me like a normal parent. At least before quarantine, I had an escape with, with school and friends. And now there's nothing but my mom and the abuse. It hurts so much. And I'm scared. I'm going insane and I need help, but everybody's self-isolating and that just makes it so much more isolating for me. I just want to curl up and cry for once, but I just get beat for that too. And I've, I've got no one here to help me, to, to tell me it's going to be okay in the end. And with nobody to lean on or, or give me hope, how am I supposed to find hope? I can't, or at least that's how it feels. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I hate this side of me, the side that hyperventilates and loses control. The side that makes me press my knees against my chest and rolls on the floor and says over and over again, I can't do it, I can't make it. <laughs> Feels like the weight of a huge boulder on my back. It's the pressure from my parents. I mean, one way or another, I'm wrong. One way or another, I failed. One way or another, I can't meet their impossible expectations. And one way or another, I'm stumbling up to my room again, about to bawl my eyes out, hyperventilating. And, I mean, if it was just that, then, I mean, I'm sure I might survive. But it's their constant failure to see my accomplishments and personal growth. I just want to be a normal teenager. And I want to do better. I want to be, a be I want to be my better self for me and not for them. You know, I cry myself to sleep every night. And the last thing that I see is their disappointed, angry faces staring down at me with the last emotion I feel being heartbreak. I feel like it's just a huge abyss that I keep on falling into. It's of disappointment and disapproval from them. It's a hole that they dig. This quarantine has made me feel so alone. I spend most nights in my room. I look at my phone. 2.34 a.m. Another night, another day. I haven't seen my parents in forever. I have no motivation to do anything. No motivation to get up, eat, do homework, text my friends. What's the point? What's the point in getting dressed if there's no one to see or judge you? What's the point in messaging friends just to get left on red for days on end? What's the point in keeping connections? What's the point in staying and being positive? What's the point in caring if grades slip if there's none of my old life to go back to? I feel trapped inside this house. I thought that maybe if me and my parents 
would be trapped inside this house together, they'd want to spend more time with me. But it's the opposite. I see them less than ever. Most people just don't understand how addicting vaping can be. I want to stop. You don't think I know how bad vaping is for you? I got in with the wrong crowd last year. I cared way too much about what they thought about me, so when they started passing around a dab pen, I didn't hesitate. I didn't think much about it at first. It was nice. It made me feel in control. Then my friend asked me if I wanted one of my own, and yeah, I kind of did. She got me one, and it became a regular thing. Then I tried to quit, and I realized how bad it has gotten. Every time I was stressed, I thought it was the only thing that could help. With the stress of everything today, I've gotten high pretty much every day. It's gotten easier to hide from my parents, but I secretly wish they'd catch me. I want to stop, but I don't think I can. I wish I never would have tried to fit in with those guys. My friends have tried to get me to quit. Unfortunately, this nasty habit has stuck with me and I can't seem to shake it. Quarantine was going really good. It was fine. I thought, more me time. More time with my friends, longer summer, no more school. And then I realized I'd have to spend more time with my family. The family that hates me. They still haven't accepted the fact that I'm gay. Before we all got locked up together, it didn't happen very often. Then it continued, the abuse, the hitting, the kicking, yelling at me. I didn't know what else to do. It's like this thing, it's like I'm never good enough for them. It's always what they want me to be, not what I want to be. It's like being gay is something that can just be scared out of you. That's not how it works. To them, hurting me is okay. I don't want to be what they want me to be. I, I want to be who I am. And, and with my friends, I can do that. I can be comfortable. I can talk about what I want to without judgment. Is it bad that I like being with my friends better than my own family? I look forward to the day when I can finally go back to school and my activities and hear my new name and my pronouns being used. My family still pretends they don't know. I'm not who they want me to be. I long for the day when I can legally change my name to the one I wish. When my parents can finally accept me for the way I am. When I can finally live outside of these four walls. I feel so confined. Trapped, even. My family still calls me by a name I no longer go by, with a gender that no longer expresses the real me. It feels like a habit they'll never be able to break from. I miss my friends. Every single time I hear them use my new name and my pronouns, it gives me a glimmer of hope. How many more days until I can finally be free of judgment? How many more months until I can taste escape? How many more years until I can finally see the world change for the better? And how much longer before I can finally look back and smile on the changes I made? My friends have no idea what it's like. They have loving parents that accept them. They can't comprehend the complexity of having parents who you hope love you, who you hope treat you right. I remember when my parents were still around, mentally, and I didn't have these scars. I remember when I was loved more than alcohol. Every day it gets worse and worse. The insults and name calling. I get it. They're stressed. They lost their jobs when everything shut down. I just wish they wouldn't take it out on me. They treat me like everything's my fault, like I caused them to lose their jobs. I can't do anything right. I just hope one day I'll get the parents that I once knew back. I'm sure deep down they still love me, and I'm sure deep down I still love them. But I deserve parents who respect me, who love me, not parents who take me down 
every chance they get. I deserve parents who love me as much as I'm willing to love them. To everyone else, Uncle Jeff is the fun uncle that everyone wishes they had. But to me, he's the monster under the bed. He's not the kind of monster that goes away when you shut your eyes. He haunts me throughout the day and creates an environment where I can't focus. And now I can't ever get away from him because he lost his job and has been living with us since the quarantine started. From what I can remember, he used to be my favorite person. Now I can barely look at him. When I look at him, disgust rises at my throat. I mean, how can someone who puts on such a brilliant act be such a terrible human? It all started with a small conversation. All I could focus on was that he locked the door. A million thoughts rushed into my head. I kept moving farther and farther away, but he just kept coming closer, and I tried to push him off of me, but he was just so much stronger. So I just, I shut my eyes, because I didn't want to remember what he did to me. Who do I tell? Who do I turn to? If I scream, will anyone hear me? Maybe I'm wrong. I've never tried telling anyone, and the screaming's always been in my head, I'm afraid. If I do tell, will anyone hear me? And if I do scream, will anyone come running? Where do I even start? And will they be even believe me? The effects of abuse continue much longer after the abuse stops. Abuse is real and it's happening to kids just like you and me. One in four kids will be abused by the time they're 18. Since this pandemic started, there's been a 22% increase in sexual assault hotline calls. Of those, almost 80% said that they were living with their perpetrator. Abuse can take on many different forms. Sexual abuse, undesired sexual behavior. Physical, a mark or bruise that lasts more than 24 hours. Neglect, the denial of one's essential needs. Food, water, shelter, clothing, love. Emotional, words or names meant to put you down. Or presence of illegal drugs in a home. Abusers may lie and try to convince the victim that it's their fault. It is never the victim's fault. If you or someone you know is being abused, do the right thing. Tell. And if at first they don't believe you, keep telling until someone does. Help is out there. No one deserves to be abused. Never give up hope. 